Hey, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida. Welcome to another episode of Boo Ray Explains. And today, we're going to talk about depth of field. Before we get started, don't forget to check out my podcast. It's called Photobomb. It's available anywhere that podcasts are found. Join my group on Facebook. It is called Pro Photo Talk with Boo Ray Perry. You're going to love it. We have a lot of fun there. And also be sure to follow me on Instagram, Boo Ray Perry on Instagram. Easy to find. All right. We've talked about so far in this series, we've talked about just the basics of photography because that's what I want to do. I want to have a building block system here. We talked about the exposure triangle, what a stop is. We talked about aperture. We talked about exposure. We talked about uh, shutter speed. We talked about ISO. So the next step now is to talk about those three things in the exposure triangle and to talk about what they do in addition to changing the light in your camera. All right, each one of them has a secondary function, a secondary effect that they will have on your images. And we're going to tackle the hardest one first. I spent some time trying to figure out how I was going to do this because now we're starting to get into an area where when you, you pull one thread, it unravels 10 threads and it can become overwhelming you. And I really want this series to be one where each video is kind of easy to digest. So in this video, we're going to talk about depth of field and the reason we're talking about depth of field is because it is affected by your aperture. This is the secondary thing that your aperture will affect. But the thing about depth of field is it's affected by three different things. It's affected by your aperture. It's affected by the distance between your subject and your camera. And it's affected by the focal length of your lens. And we haven't even talked about focal length yet. So we're kind of talk, talk about that a little bit today too, just to, to get that cleared up. So those are the three things that affect depth of field. We're going to take them one by one, and when we're done, you're going to understand depth of field. Here we go. Before we get started with the three things that affect your depth of field, first let's define what depth of field is. Depth of field is much easier to understand if you call it something simpler, and what it is, is what's in focus. That's basically what it is. So when someone starts talking about the depth of field, of an image. They're just talking about what's in focus. And particularly what they're talking about is how deep is the field of focus. So I'm showing my hands left and right this way while I'm talking, but I want you to imagine that my hands are in front of me and behind my face like this. Okay. So this is what I'm talking about. This is the depth of field. So if you're focused on my face, the question is how deep is the field of focus? In other words, if you focus on my nose and my hand is in front of my face, is my hand also in focus? What about if my hand is here? What about if my hand is here? Well, look, now my hand is in focus. Notice how the camera is jumping back and forth. It's focusing on my hand and then my face is going to be blurred. And then if I move it, it'll focus on my face and now my hand is blurred. That's because my hand is outside the depth of field. The depth of field here is fairly shallow. The depth of field on my face right now is probably about a foot, which means what's in front of my face for about a foot is in focus and what's behind my face for about a foot is in focus. That's the depth of field. That's what depth of field means. And I was going to stop the video right here and say, that's it. We've defined depth of field, but we can't do that. We've got to talk about what affects your depth of field and if you came looking for this video to understand depth of field, you're going to need to know this stuff. So I'm going to make this a longer video and we're going to go into the three things. Are we ready? All right, here we go. The first thing we've got to talk about is aperture. The way that your aperture affects your depth of field is very, very simple. The wider the aperture, the more shallow the depth of field. And depth of field is described as shallow and deep. So shallow is, this is really shallow and this is really deep, right? Uh, really deep actually would be much deeper than that. So a shallow depth of field, you get that by having your aperture be very, very wide. And we talked about aperture and remember how the numbers work in reverse in aperture. So in aperture, the smaller the number is, the bigger the hole. So if you turn your aperture to like F2, you will get a very shallow depth of field. Only a little bit will be in focus on either side of your subject. If you stop down to like F22 or F6, you know, it's a, a big number, the hole gets really small 
And as a result, your depth of field will be greater. There will be more in focus in front of and behind the thing you're taking a picture of. There'll be more in focus. You will have a deeper depth of field because you have an aperture that is smaller. And when you make your aperture smaller, the number actually gets bigger. Every time I say that, I hate it because it's just it's 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 the single probably most confusing thing to remember when you learn photography, uh, but that's just the way it works, and we just have to learn to deal with it. Okay, so that's aperture. You got that? Depth of field gets smaller when the aperture gets bigger. All right, that's aperture. Next comes distance to the subject. Here we go. The closer you are to your subject the more shallow the depth of field. So if you get really, really close to something, the depth of field becomes really, really shallow. You get a lot of blur around your image. And this is why you see this a lot in macro photography. For example, if I'm at a wedding or whatever, when I, when I shoot the rings, I get really, really close because I want to get everything blurry around the rings. So I get really, really close and I open up the aperture really, really wide. It's because the aperture being wide makes it more shallow. Getting really, really close makes it more shallow. Bingo, right? So I'm double, I'm double hitting it now. I'm getting a really shallow depth of field. That was pretty simple, right? The last thing that affects your depth of field is the focal length of your lens, but it does, but kind of not really. Right. <laughs> there's, there's a caveat on this. So we haven't talked about focal length yet, and we'll talk about that in a later video, but basically a long focal length lens would be like a 400 millimeter lens, and then a short focal length lens would be like a 14 millimeter lens. Like a wide angle lens is a short focal length, and a telephoto lens is a long focal length. So a 400 millimeter lens will give you a more shallow depth of field than a 14 millimeter lens if you are doing everything else the same. So if your distance from the subject is the same with both of those lenses, then the telephoto lens, the 400 millimeter lens or whatever, that will be a more shallow depth of field. But if you're doing that, the pictures are not the same, right? You, you've got a wide picture with the wide angle lens, and then you put the zoom lens on your camera and you zoom in. So your depth of field gets shorter because you zoomed in. But it's also not the same picture. So the real question is, what if you're taking the same picture? So if you take a picture with a wide angle lens and you've got an aperture is set, you know, and your distance is the same, and then you take out this zoom lens and you try to take the same picture. Well, in order to take that picture, you're going to have to back up because your zoom lens is zooming in. You're gonna have to back way up. And when you back up, that changes your depth of field. The farther back you go, the greater the depth of field. So what happens in the end is, if the pictures are the same, you're either really close with a wide angle lens, or you're really far away with a zoom lens, the depth of field is going to be the same. Because it, the zoom lens, because it's a long focal length, it makes the depth of field more shallow. But because you have to back up, and we've already determined that the farther you are away from your subject, the deeper your depth of field, that that backing up will then negate everything that you did with the zoom lens. So if you're taking the exact same picture, the depth of field will be the same. If you are taking the same framing, same picture, one with a wide angle, one with a zoom lens, you will get the same depth of field. But technically, technically, you get a more shallow depth of field with a zoom lens, as long as you don't move your feet. If you shoot from the same spot, you get a more shallow depth of field. When you think about it in practical terms, that really doesn't, it doesn't really help you much. <laughs> because, because you're like, oh, I need a more shallow depth of field, so I'm going to put on this zoom lens. Well, you put it on the zoom lens, and now you've got to back up, and it takes away the shallow depth of field that you just were trying to achieve. You know, so, yes, physics-wise, you know, a focal length affects your depth of field, but in practical application, it rarely makes a difference because you frame up the picture the same no matter what lens you're using. So moving your feet back and forth or zooming the lens, if that's what you're doing, negates whatever effect the lens focal length is having on your depth of field. But there's one more thing. 
that's kind of tricky and kind of cool. You know, I just said that the focal length affects your depth of field, but because you have to back up when you lose a, use a longer focal length, it actually comes out the same, so it really doesn't matter. Ah, here's the cool thing. It will look like it matters. Here's why. Your focal length affects something called the area of confusion, which will be another video later, and we'll talk about that later. But to make it simple, it is this. The distance in front of your subject that is in focus and the distance behind your subject that is in focus, those two distances are not the same. They vary. And they vary according to the focal length of the lens that you are using. So, if you're using, say, a 14 millimeter lens, a wide angle lens, and you focus on my nose, and I don't know what distance you are from the camera, it doesn't matter, but for the, for the purposes of this, you're standing in front of me and you focus on my nose, the area of the depth of field is going to be about 25% in front of my nose and 75% behind my nose with a wide angle, really wide angle lens, like a 14 millimeter lens. So point of focus, this is where the focus stops and behind me, way back here is where the focus stops. Now, if you put a zoom lens on and you frame up the exact same picture, the depth of field is going to be the same, the same distance, except now it's going to be closer to 50-50. So let's say the depth of field is two feet. If you use a zoom lens and you take a picture of my head and you focus on my nose, then everything in front of me for a foot and behind me for a foot is going to be in focus. If you take the same picture, same framing with a wide angle lens, say 14 millimeters, now What's 75% of two feet? <laughs> a foot and a half? Now everything behind me for a foot and a half is in focus. And everything in front of me for a half a foot is in focus. Do you understand? When you use a wider angle lens, it moves your subject closer in the depth of field, closer to the front edge of the depth of field. And when you use a zoom lens, it moves them farther back in the depth of field. To, you know, with a 400 millimeter lens, it's almost dead center. If you're using a 600 or an 800 millimeter lens, it can even move like this. So the depth of field is the same. It's the same distance. But where you are in that depth of field changes. And how does this make it seem like there's more depth of field or less depth of field based on the lens? Well, when you think about it, if you're taking a picture of somebody's face, usually there's nothing in front of them that is in the field of view. Right? There's not like a, a branch or a leaf or something in front of them. It's just their face. That's the first thing the viewer sees. And then there's all the stuff that's behind them. So if you're using a wide angle lens, the depth of field is the same as it is on the zoom lens. But 75% of that field is behind them. And with the zoom lens, only 50% of the field is behind them. Which means it gets blurry sooner with the zoom lens. You understand? foot and a half behind me with the wide angle lens is in focus, only a foot behind me with the wide angle lens is in focus with the zoom lens. And as the stuff gets blurry, it gets blurrier the farther away it is. So what happens in practical applications is that by using a zoom lens, everything behind you gets blurrier faster and more muddled. And so as a result, it looks like the depth of field is more shallow because it is behind your subject. The depth of field behind your subject is more shallow. It's actually deeper in front of your subject, but because there's nothing in front of your subject to, to see, you know, to notice as being more out of focus, you don't see that. You don't know that. All you do is you pay attention to what's behind your subject. And the stuff behind your subject is more blurry with a zoom lens than it is with a wide angle lens. Does that make sense? I hope so. All right. That's depth of field. Aperture affects depth of field. It is also affected by the focal length of your lens and the distance you are standing from your subject. I hope, I hope that you got this. This might be one of those videos you need to watch a second time. Oh, one other thing. By the way, there are these great calculators online. Uh, and they're called depth of field calculators. I'll put a link in the description. And you can go there and you can type in 
here's my lens, here's how far I am from the subject, here's my aperture, and it will tell you exactly what your depth of field will be. And if you're a starting photographer, it's a good idea to go and spend some time on one of these calculators just so you can start to understand rough ideas. Eventually, you will get to a point where you just kind of have a rough idea in your head of what works where. Like when I'm working with a group or I'm taking pictures, I just have a rough idea of, okay, if I'm using this lens and, and there are three people in the rows that I'm shooting, then I need my, my aperture to be X. You know, I need, to, I need to be a certain amount, and that will make sure that everybody is in focus in my picture. Uh, you, you, some people have hard knowledge, and they know the exact numbers, and there's people like me, and we just kind of eyeball it. You just kind of you get a feel for it, usually by making mistakes. <laughs> you come home and you've got some pictures and the person behind is a little bit out of focus and you're like, oh, what was I at? What was my, what was my aperture there? How did they screw that up? You know, and then you fix it the next time. Uh, so it's a good idea to get a feel for what these numbers are and how they work with your camera and with your lens and your distance to subject so that you can on the fly determine the best aperture to use in most situations to make sure that everything's in focus that you want to be in focus and that stuff that's you don't want to be out in focus is not in focus. So grab one of these depth of field calculators online. Also, they make them for your phone. So you can look them up right there, which is great. If you're on a big job and you're really worried, you can just pull out your phone and plug in the numbers and it will tell you, oh, here's what you need to be doing with your aperture. Here's what you need to be doing. Here's how far you need to be from your subject, uh, so forth, to make sure you get this entire group in focus. All right, that's depth of field. Whew. All right. That was a lot, I know. <laughs> the next videos uh, won't be so hard, I promise. Mm -hmm.